All right, so the first color we're gonna do here is a pearlized white by Testers. This is an acrylic paint. Uh, no need to thin it out. It's uh, pretty thin, so runs right through pretty, pretty good. It's got a good flow. It dries pretty fast as well. So if you notice throughout this video, I'm gonna be painting multiple baits. I think I'm doing about four or five different ones. Okay, the next color we're gonna do is uh, made by Wicked, and it's a pearl lime green. Um, now this one's borderline. Some people might want to thin this out, but I spray it about 25 psi, and it comes out it comes out okay. I don't have too too much problems with this one. So the pearl green is gonna only go on the top half of the body. And it's actually the first layer of greens. We're going to be doing another layer on top of this one. Okay, the next color is going to be a transparent orange. And this is made by Createx. This is going on the throat or the belly. And I'm only going to do a layer or two here. I'm going to keep it real uh, light so it gives it a more natural look. If, if you go too heavy with this, it, it just gets like super bright looking. And uh, that's not too natural. So I kind of go light with it. And the pearl white that I laid first gives this transparent color a really good look. Okay, so the next step is to uh, to add your scale pattern. This is just uh, simply uh, a loofah, a shower loofah. Find them in Walmart, dollar stores, or wherever. Uh, fairly cheap, a dollar. And then you just uh, cut off the middle uh, tag. Uh, it's kind of sometimes it's a rope holding it together. Sometimes it's a rubber band or something. You just uh, cut that up and unravel it. It's, it's super long. I'd say it's probably, I don't know, five feet long. Anyway, so you cut off a section and uh, you wrap it around your bait and then you take some uh, clips as you see what I'm doing. I'm doing that right now. You pull it and clip it so the mesh stays tight and doesn't move while you're painting.
Okay, so now we're going with the second color green, and this is a it's a wicked color, and it's called Detail Moss Green. Now this is a is a pretty hardy color, so I do thin this out. I usually do uh, four drops of the moss green and two drops of thinner, and then you know I I can turn my PSI down to about uh, 15 to 17, and uh, it sprays pretty good. Now, if you do add an extra drop of thinner to this, uh, the pearl green that we first sprayed, uh, it does show through because if you thin out any paint thin enough, then it come, kind of becomes a transparent paint. So if you throw in a couple extra drops of, uh, of your thinner here, then you can get that pearl, that pearl lime green that we first sprayed to, to show through on this moss green and it gives it a, a real nice look. So this moss green is just covering the pearl green, the top half, half of the body. Okay, so I'm pulling off the scale pattern here, and you can just see the, uh, the design that you get. It's pretty nice. Now normally I go back over the top of this with, uh, with this color I just sprayed, just to get those uh, bright scale patterns built down a bit so it looks more natural. You can, you can leave it bright if you want, it's all your choice. Okay, so here I'm taking my sponge and I'm getting it wet to uh, basically to get it pliable again. You don't want to use a dry sponge, so get it wet, squeeze all the water back out, that's what I'm doing right here. And then I even take a paper towel and I ball the sponge back up and then I put the paper towel over it to, to get off all the excess water that I can. Because if you have water on your sponge, then when you put your paint on it, then obviously your paint's going to soak up all that water and it's going to be super watery. And it doesn't work out too well. So now that we got that taken care of, I'm ready to, uh, here I'm cutting a piece of craft paper ju uh, just to hold the paint that I'll be using. And then I'll be reaching for some black here. I'll be using a, a Create Text Black. And all you want to do here is you want to dip your sponge into the black, and then you want to take your sponge and dab that off on your paper towel next to you or whatever. I dab it on my paper towel, I dab it on that little craft paper that you see there. Uh, you don't want to go from your uh, pile of paint right to your base. You want to get all, all the excess off first. As you see I'm just uh, heat setting that band I just did. Just going back over and uh, getting it to to my liking so you just flip it over and do the other side um, no two bass that you do are going to be the same so don't worry about that part Alright, so lastly here, we're going to be doing a, a black by Comart, and uh, all this does is I go over the back of the baits and around the eye sockets, and I just darken in the color because you don't want to 
leave your greens the way they, they are, you want to dull them down a bit because it looks more natural. Now I usually uh, fade the, the sides with the transparent black and then the very middle of the back I usually go super dark. That's just how I like it and I feel that it looks better in the water that way. As you can see right here, I'm showing you guys uh, the difference. So after you get that all done, the baits are basically done. Uh, so you can you can go ahead and apply your eyes. I like to use uh, a goldish yellow on these ones, just because the color flow right. I also sign all my baits. If you watched any of my videos, you guys know that. So I'll go ahead and sign the bottoms of all these and then uh, the baits are done. And here's a preview of the fully done bait. All right, let's get out on the water. All right, so I'm showing you this clip. I don't get your fish, but I just want to show you this uh, there's a run right here okay so there's rapids and then on my right hand side there's a whole bunch of slack water and then about I don't know six to eight feet off from that shoreline there's a whole bunch of boulders right there so it's perfect perfect spot to fish any shoreline any top water bait okay so I'm gonna cast towards the shore I'm gonna work it back to the boat now to use any type of walker, a Sammy, a Spook, a Vixen, anything like that, what you want to do is you want to have slack in your line and you're going to pop the line, okay? You're going to like take your rod tip and just twitch it. And that's going to give you the side to side motion. You cannot have tight line. You have to have slack in your line at all times or it's not going to work. Okay, there you go. There's one. Now I'm not sure if he hit it twice, I forget. But there's definitely an initial splash, and then I set the hooks up after that. So he might have missed the first time and came back and hit it a second time. That happens all the time. So no matter what, if a fish hits and misses, keep going with your motion. Don't stop. Chances are he's going to come back and hit it again. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm um, actually putting my Sammy Walker back on and there's going to be a brush pile coming up in just a second. It's this dark area. Uh, right there, okay. So there's a, there's a fish sitting there. And I say, I say, I don't know if you guys seen that, but I saw it. What I do is uh, I wrap my boat around and uh, I'm going back after him. Now this guy violently attacks this thing. You can just watch. I flip it back out there in just a second after I get this hook untangled. right there on that dirt pile. Here we go. Like a freight train. Now this guy, this guy choked this bait. And the only reason I'm showing you the next part is to show you what you might have to do at some point. Basically you had to do surgery. 
it's all the way down in his gills so I go through his actual gills to get down in there instead of trying to rip the hook out of his uh, throat I go in from the side and I get it unhooked perfectly now it looks like a bloody mess but it's really not that bad as you see on the re release here in just a second he swims away so I just go in there and uh, pop the hook forward get it in a neutral neutral spot and then I'm able to pull it cleanly out Sorry, guy. get him in the water and okay, there he goes all right so here I'm uh, fishing and I get up towards the shallows a little bit actually super shallow and he hits it on the way back to the boat most of my fish are towards the shoreline more, but but this guy hit uh, coming right by the boat. Here's a perfect example of what I said. You see how many times he tried to eat that thing? Even though he missed the first time, I kept going. I didn't stop the motion. I didn't stop and give up and say crap. I kept the I kept the bait moving. You saw how how he came back and hit it again, though, right? Only because a fish hits and misses, don't stop your action. Keep going like nothing happened. Just wanted to share that with you guys so, so you could see what I was talking about earlier. That's a pike. Now that was a pike. If you look closely enough, you could see that he actually missed it. He hit it with his mouth, and I think I, it hooked him in the tail. But gun. that's the second time that a pike came fully out of the water after one of those baits. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.